Hi Pisces, welcome to your November 2017 love reading. It's Raina here. So, in November, you're spending most of the month with the sun in a water sign, Scorpio. So this is a friendly angle to Pisces and you may feel a certain affinity for this particular time of year in general. Maybe things feel a lot better to you. But then you also have your ruler, Neptune, going direct at the end of the month. I think it's the 25th. Don't quote me on that. I don't know how that does affect Pisces. Maybe it's better to have Neptune retrograde because um, Neptune direct means more <laughs> illusion. When, it, when Neptune goes retrograde, it's like pulling the curtain back. So which would you prefer to reside in, Pisces? Do you, refer to, do you prefer to reside in fantasy or reality? When Neptune is direct, you get your fantasies back intact. So anyway, I don't, I don't know how that's going to affect you. And how, it, how uh, having Neptune retrograde has affected you. Maybe, maybe it's been difficult for Pisces people. Maybe you felt like your illusions have been shattered in certain aspects. I don't know when it went retrograde. I think it was in June, but again, don't quote me on that. I just kind of mentioned this on the fly, so I didn't even prepare. Okay. I'm using a new deck this month. Uh, oh, you know, it's funny. I uh, included the, the card that's about this... Um, creator of this deck. I guess she's not just the artist, but the fantasy artist and illustrator, Jennifer Galasso. So this is the, the name of this deck is Crystal Visions Tarot. So see if you like it. I have been doing kind of spiritual love readings with this deck. It seems like it's been working out that way. If it's just coincidental or otherwise who knows but it's been happening I was going to say um, is it live or Memorex but that is like you know then you can tell that I'm <laughs> you know you can kind of tell that I'm not uh, in my 20s or 30s or even 40s maybe <laughs> definitely <laughs> okay. Ooh, ten and nine of wands. Oh, I love this picture. Wow, is that magical. There are some really beautiful images with some of these cards. And because of the nature of the Nine of Swords, I do pick another card. Because it's not really a, re a card of resolution. Now, I've been getting the Four of Swords a lot, so... <clears throat> so... Let me look at this for one second. Hmm. It's very interesting how they depict certain cards. I'm going to take out the focus card and the past position. You would have to know about... about the, the meaning of the cards already before you could use this deck, I would say. So if you're an aspiring tarot reader, definitely start with the, uh, what do you call it, the Rider Waite deck with the Pamela Coleman illustrations. Pamela Coleman Smith, I mean, she, she does all of them. They have different types of of uh, writer white decks, there's one called the Radiant Tarot, and they just make everything more, you know, brighter. I prefer the more subdued one myself. I have never had the 
there's a Centennial edition I'm tempted to get. I'd like to see the difference in the cards. But this card, you would never know what this means. You'd say, okay, there's a dude, he looks like he's a Native American, and he's got arrows in his backpack. Okay, now what? What does this mean? The Ten of Wands is a card of Anthony and Lewis playing in, uh, Tarot playing simple calls it the burdens of success. Ten is a number of completion, but also the highest of the non-court cards, okay? So it's the apex of the non-court cards. Um, wands can relate to career, creativity, things like that. So it's talking about extra responsibilities, feel, you know, risking burnout and things like that. In other words, when I see it for the overall theme, either the person may be working overtime or they are working overtime trying to make a relationship work. And it's like threatening their well-being. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> In the past position, we have the Nine of Wands. And this is a card. Let's see if, if she has anything. I think this is okay. I kind of like how they depicted it. This is kind of like um, in the Morgan Greer deck that I typically use. They show this sentinel or this kind of a person at the gates. It's kind of like this guardedness, okay? Um, so it's showing like a weariness in terms of relationship. And by the way, some people confuse the word wary and weary. Maybe it's a combination of both. Wary means that you are... Um, suspecting or I, I'm not thinking of the right uh, synonym that you are cautious about somebody else's behavior so you're wary of them you know you could say suspicious but it's just kind of like it doesn't even have to be that I guess it's kind of like suspicion but weary means you're tired you're tired of what is happening so those are two different words I said wary but it could be weary too and um that's just my pet peeve when people don't say the right word that's kind of similar but isn't the same word. Um, so what is going on? You're probably, this is probably, the, no, this isn't probably. Well, it doesn't have to be somebody in a relationship, I guess. I was going to say it's got to be somebody in a relationship. No, it doesn't. You could be single and be afraid of getting involved with somebody and using work as an as a buffer or a way to ex to get away from that because you, you've been hurt and you're afraid of it happening again and certainly Pisces people can get there all of us can get there why am I picking on Pisces all of us can be there but it can also be that you're in a relationship with somebody that you are not sure of you don't know where they stand so right now we have the Ace of Swords. I've been getting this card a lot. Seeing things as they really are. Seeing, you know, cutting through the crap and seeing things as they really are. How does that happen? Well, um, trying to think. There will be in November a full moon in Taurus, so that hits your third house of communications. Again, this is general. And third house of communication, uh, full moons can bring revelations. Maybe you read something online about somebody that you have been seeing and their status. Oh, they're actually married, or oh, they're actually involved with somebody. They told me that they were single. Boy, they're stupid. They didn't. They didn't think I was going to check their Facebook profile. Wow. They really um, are not very bright. Uh, something like that, you know. And um, that may make you. Where you know you've already been wary uh, of them, and maybe that was your intuition talking. And now you have the truth. Okay. Higher message. <clears throat> Ten of 
Knight of Cups. This is the spiritual message. Okay, now, there are many possibilities here. It's like, hold out for your prince. Hold out for this person. Don't settle for less. This is the quintess quintessential knight in shining armor. Um, the person who I think would really be your type of person. This person might be a water sign. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily saying, you know, predicting that this person's coming into your life in November. It might be just saying, hold out for this person. Don't settle for less. This is the person you're looking for. Anyone who doesn't fit this bill is not the person that you should be chasing after, worrying about, crying about. But look for this person because this person is the right one. This person may be creative. They may be very romantic and gentle. And it's possible that you were involved with a fire sign. I'm thinking Sagittarius, the nine of wands, the number nine, you know, Sagittarius is the ninth house. If that's the case, if it's a, if it's a fire sign, sometimes fire signs can run roughshod over others because it's not out of malice in most cases. It's because they just are very blunt in their speech. They just are like very honest to a fault, but sometimes it may come across as kind of harsh. And um, you have to be willing to see things as they really are and not take offense to people's behavior, but sometimes behavior doesn't mesh. Maybe you have um, got involved with somebody who is um, has a different temperament than yours and it just doesn't mesh very well. And you have to make peace with that. What crosses you is the Hierophant. And this sometimes can be religious indoctrination that you still hold in your mind about what is okay, what is not okay. You may be berating yourself for not wanting to, if you're married and you're unhappy, you may be saying, I should stay in this marriage. The church says that it's wrong to divorce. Or um, what will the neighbors think? Everyone will think I'm a failure. It's about conformity. And marriage to me is conformity. Now, I'm totally going off the reservation here and being uh, totally strident and opinionated uh, Sagittarius, which is redundant. And I respect your views if they're different. I'm not trying to force my views down somebody's throat. And I have this weird conformity or um, traditional part of me, maybe because I have Mars and Capricorn. But, um, and so it's not that I'm totally against tradition if it serves a person's life. If it is a prison cell, then I have a problem with it. Or if it's blind conformity, if you're conforming to a doctrine or dogma and you really are not engaging in it, you're just like you've been conditioned by your upbringing to believe such and such, then that's on you. That's lazy. That's lazy thinking. But if you, if you are really not sure if you should do X, Y, or Z, then I have a little bit of sympathy for that because it is confusing when you've been raised a certain way and yet your circumstances don't seem to jibe with that. Where you are unhappy in a marriage and yet your religion tells you you, shouldn't, you, know, you should stay in this relationship. Or keeping a family together when you're desperately unhappy. I do believe you have to think of your children first and not just your own selfish desires uh, because, or, you know, your love life. But if you're in a toxic environment, then for sure that may not be good for them. It depends. It all depends on the situation. 
And there, there are so many different types of situations in this <clears throat> that I can't, you know, make blanket statements. The what is coming in is represented by the Three of Wands, and I just love this card. It's really about, and you could say she's holding the world in her hands. It's about expansion. It's about looking beyond your horizon. Oh, I was I was thinking about Jupiter because in in um, uh, today as I record this, Jupiter is going into Scorpio now. For all of us, Jupiter in Scorpio gives a more intense, more intensity, lends more intensity to all of our dealings because Jupiter is a planet of luck and expansion, and Jupiter is a big old planet so it has this and and on the collective it has this massive influence so we we had it in libra and now we have it in 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 a sign that is known for intensity so that can magnify it for pisces specifically this is hitting your ninth house of foreign travel and also higher learning and your philosophical framework so this you're already being um, expanded by virtue of the fact that this is in your house. But the Three of Wands is a fire, fiery energy that is concerned with, you know, what am I doing? And where do I want to spread what I'm doing? Do I want to take my business overseas? Do I just want to travel and see the world? But there might be a career um, connection to it with the wands. It can be creative endeavors or <laughs> career endeavors, you know. So you may just be wanting to have that change of pace, okay? And let's see. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that Jupiter is the ancient ruler of Pisces. So there's always that connection with Jupiter and Pisces, even in a very arcane, or is that archaic? That's probably the word archaic, as I'm looking for, sort of way, where it, you can see sometimes that part of Pisces, that over-the-top quality sometimes, usually in self-indulgence. Um, I think of the Nine of Cups with that. Um, so definitely... Some of you with this Jupiter influence may already be thinking of going overseas and perhaps trying to find work. Maybe you'll mix travel for pleasure with travel for business. Who knows? But um, that's where your mind is at. And maybe that's where you're thinking that love lies for you. So I get these cards like the Ten of Wands, the Three of Wands, and perhaps some of you are really connected to your careers and it's and you're finding it hard to make room for romance, especially if you've come off of a a relationship that broke up in not the best kind of way. You may be kind of shying away from it like the Nine of Wands suggests. The outcome is the Four of Swords, which is a card of... Um, oh, well, <laughs> I conveniently forgot about this one. The Nine of Swords, so we have two Swords cards. Swords connect with mental energy and conflict. Nine of Swords, the way they they depict it in this one, Jennifer Glasso, is that um, the woman is sleeping and the sword is lying. There's all these swords and with these, um, what is that, a crow? I don't know what the crow symbolizes. Um, <clears throat> is it like a scavenger type of a thing if it is it's like i would say kind of like your thoughts feed on themselves and they feed from the negative the decayed matter okay and this is so true so are you getting on the dark side um possibly a negative spiral that's something for sure i was just thinking about it my myself because i have uh, saturn in pisces and i have chiron in pisces I think it's very important for people with prominent, with Pisces in their, their chart to really look at the idea of the negative spiral because we have Neptune transiting through Pisces and we have Chiron transiting through Pisces. So 
people who are at that middle period of their lives, like 50 years old, let's say the half century mark. Ouch, that sounds very um, uh, ancient, doesn't it? <laughs> um, there is a need to really review. Uh, you're having a Chiron. I'm having a Chiron return, okay? And, and because Pisces happens to also be in Saturn, um, that is creating this real sense of like, whoa, emotional, uh, you know, extra than, than even it would by itself. Chiron, the wounded healer, bringing up this, dredging up pain to be healed. And th this can be things that have not been really dealt with for many years. So with the conjunction of... Um, well, it's not, I don't know, I have to, I'm not going to say that it's a conjunction right now. I, I don't know exactly where Neptune is. I think it's at 19 um, Pisces. I'm not really sure, though. Uh, and, I, and I think Chiron is just about to leave Pisces, if I'm not mistaken. It might be at a later degree. So it's not necessarily that they're in conjunction, that they're in within aspect of each other. But it could be that, you know, just by virtue of them both being in the same sign, that matters. And coming, coming into that, there may be a lot of um, remembering things that you thought were gone forever. And it's like, whoa, why am I thinking about this? So just keep, be very aware. It doesn't, you know, don't worry about how old you are. Just think about these things in connection with, Jupiter and Scorpio and Chiron and Neptune and Pisces, these watery outer planetary energies that are really influencing us big time. And then the four, but one thing I wanted to say about the Nine of Swords is it's really about things that go bump in the night. So um, a lot of times people experience insomnia because it's a time of... Um, rest for a lot of people and then they can't distract themselves with their busy work and so that's when all the demons come out so you have to you have to really be prepared and that's something that you do through your behaviors your habits your daily habits what you tell yourself and then also by meditating and things like that the four swords is about retreat rest um, rejuvenation and feeling restored. So I have all these re, re, re energies and feeling like maybe you can make things happen for yourself. Like you can feel a sense of renewal and that gives you a fresh, a fresh perspective on life. One that is not clouded over with anxiety and, and kind of like getting stuck in the past. You want to be able to move ahead and leave the past behind. So when Chiron goes into Aries, I'm sure a lot of Pisces people will breathe a sigh of relief because they, they'll feel like, oh gosh, you know, uh, having Chiron right on top of my Pis my sun sign or my rising sign has been brutal. And, uh, and yet it might be very healing too. It depends on whether or not you really um, go with it and you don't try to run away from it. So I'm going to pick an oracle card to go along with this. Um, I'm going to, for you, since you are a water sign, use the oracle of the mermaids. I just have to get my... There's so many boxes out here that are just like... Let's see here. I, I almost have to like cut to the chase with these cards because some of the some of the interpretations are a little much and I don't want to take up too much time. Homeland, arrival. A journey ends, establishment building settled. What is your fourth house, Pisces? Cancer, I guess. Oh no, it would be, it actually would be Gemini. Okay. 
So actually, in December, you're going to have a full moon in your fourth house. So there may be some something that comes to your attention regarding your family of origin or your family or you're selling a house or something like that. So that might be kind of looking at the future for those of you. And again, uh, yeah, we're talking about travel, so that might... Arrival, journey ends, establishment, building settled. Okay, sounds like how long I must be going. What what number was that? 44? Okay. This is a time to journey and explore. <laughs> right here, right? <clears throat> there is a time for adventure and uncertainty. There's a time to be a stranger, a f the foreigner, the one who does not come from that place. And then there's a time to go home. Home is not, as many of you ha have taught and thought, a heaven. It is not the space that exists after death. It is a place on this earth, and it is the place of your blood and your bone. And where you would swim to now if you had the endurance of our friends, the great blue whales. The turtles know their home that place where they were born. And you humans have several, quote, homes. One is the place of your ancestors, the place where your blood comes from. We ask you now, where is that home? Do you know where it is? Because if you do not know, this is the time to discover this. The second place is the homeland that is the place of your birth, the first memories this lifetime. The place where your story began to be told and where you, you began to shape the being you are today. Memories and lessons, friendships and delights. Um, so maybe it's about reconnecting with something from your past. Now, how this relates to your relationships. Um, I always think of that Six of Cups, and that's the, the card of the the past, childhood, the time when you feel idyllic, when you feel like um, innocence is present. And that is something that is worth cultivating and worth appreciating because that can give you a sense of identity sometimes that you lose when you're trying to break away and form your own um, sense of forge your own path and forge your own sense of identity. I feel like some of you in December, so this is going forward, may be drawn to your home base. Maybe there's something going on that needs taken care of. Um, and you are put in that position. Or perhaps it is simply that you are um, having to deal with your house that you grew up in or something, and you maybe you go back to your hometown, and maybe you run into some romantic interest from your past. Who knows? But home may figure um, in December for you. Whether or not that relates to a love situation, I don't know. I picked this card because a lot of them tend to be love-related, but apparently this may just be more of a general message. So I'm going to leave it there, Pisces. I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome November. Bye.